Welcome to Parallels Remote Application Server webinar. Today we'll be talking about what's new in RAS version 18. We'll be starting this webinar in five minutes. During the preparation, please make sure you have your audio on. It could be voice over IP or dial in or callback. Best quality is always using computer audio. Questions during the webinar, please add them to the Q&A session. We'll be addressing during the presentation and after. Have to leave early. Webinar has been recorded and it will be shared later on. And for more information about Parallels RAS, go to parallels.com slash RAS. So let's wait a couple more minutes and then we'll, we'll get started. Just to remind, who are, uh, for those who just joined the webinar, we're just giving five minutes before we get started. So everybody can get connected, have everything ready before we, we get going. All right, I think it's time to get started. And welcome again to our webinar today, which is about the upcoming version of Parallels RAS, which is RAS version 18. All right, so the agenda today, uh, it's a little bit information about Parallels if you haven't heard about us, overview about Parallels Remote Application Server, and the big topic today, of course, what it's coming in RAS version 18, and a condensed demo with a couple of the new features that are coming in this particular re release. Again, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please make sure you paste them into the Q&A. We'll be addressing them on demand or by the end of the presentation today. Parallels is a global company where we have global presence today in more than 140 countries and more than 5,000 channel partners. We are in the 20% of the Fortune 500 companies, and we have more than 7 million individuals in our business to consumer product line, and more than 50,000 businesses using Parallels product suite. In our solutions, we have several products. Parallels started many years ago with Parallels Desktop for Mac, well, almost 20 years in the virtualization business. And as well now, Parallels Desktop for Chromebook Enterprise, which is a virtualization solution allowing Windows to run as well on specific models of Chromebooks. Parallels Access, easy way to have remote access to computers, especially for B2C. And Parallels Mac Management for SCCM or Microsoft Endpoint Manager. And Parallels Toolbox for Windows and Mac. And the big topic today, of course, it is Parallels Remote Application Server, which is an all-in-one remote application delivery in VDI solution providing access virtually for any device. 
when we talk about digital transformation, this is very brief what I was uh, going to, to talk about digital transformation, but what is very important in this particular slide is related to Windows Virtual Desktop. It has been a very big topic in the industry, a lot of requests coming from our customers, and today 26% of the EUC community are using or willing to use Windows Virtual Desktop. And of course, more and more companies are pushing harder due to the pandemic to work remotely. So now we can you know, talk more about what is in Windows Virtual Desktop and as well other improvements coming uh, throughout RAS version 18. In the objectives, usually we highlight certain topics related to keep employee information safe, leverage cloud benefits, enhance data security, meet market demands and as well enable business mobility. And the main focus or many areas we focused in RAS version 18, it was to reinforce this particular area related to security, cloud, the demands our customer base have requested. So we have more than 100 new features coming in RAS version 18 and they are really important for, for that particular matter. With that being said, I would like to skip to what is coming. So there are a few areas to talk today. Virtual, uh, Windows Virtual Desktop is one, management, user experience, automation, and of course, scalability. When we talk about core new features, this particular slide has a lot of stuff. I'm not going to talk individually in this slide what it's coming on everyone, but I wanted to highlight most of the features that are coming. The ones on the top, they are the most important ones uh, related to all customer base. And of course, uh, other components related to security, uh, language, support to Apple Big Sur, and as well improvements for the UX. So the slide deck itself, what I will be talking today, of course, describes most of these issues in, in more details. The first, it is our integration with Microsoft Windows Virtual Desktop. So we are extending and reaching the native Windows Virtual Desktop experience. And the way we have done, it's providing organizations with a unified uh, end user experience and as well from an administration point of view. Therefore, in this case, we are configuring maintaining, controlling access to Windows Virtual Desktops on top of what you already have using or have been thinking to use in Remote Application Server. So we support, and when I talk about enhancing WVD is not only the configuration, it is also controlling the deployments, it is the elasticity of those deployments, and of course, what is very important, the end user can use existing RAS HTML5 client and Windows clients to access WVD resources the same way he or she was accessing their resources before. Therefore, if you have a blended use case, a hybrid use case, this is a great opportunity to start onboarding WVD without compromising management, neither the security side. So we can talk about the integration in three different areas. First is the enhancement or simplicity to deploy. So it's all UI driven using APIs that we have worked with Microsoft. We unify the user administration and UX, which I just mentioned, and we'll see that throughout the demo later today. And client management. So we can use Parallels RAS policies to manage WVD client, which relates to printing, to scanning, bandwidth control, or even if you're using Microsoft Teams, for example, that is integrated very well with WVD, you can use that particular use case as well. However, when we're using cloud resources, you have to always be cautious with auto scaling, cost management, scale on demand, and we bring our auto scaling capability on Microsoft Azure and as well on premises, which includes WVD. Management, what you see in Azure portal, 
also reflects into Parallels RAS console. And we can utilize our universal printing and scanning capabilities. And we can go one step beyond using AI-based session pre-launch to optimize and have faster logins when we're using WVD and non-WVD resources. With FS Logix, great product. There's no UI to manage it, or a lot of people use PowerShell scripts to manage it or even deploy it. In RAS version 18, now you can use FS Logix profile container and use our own admin console to manage and deploy it in a very simplistic way. So in this particular release, we will no longer have user profile disks, UPDs in the UI. We're replacing with Windows Virtual Desk, uh, sorry, with FS Logix profile containers. Same for security policies. You can still use report and monitoring and automate, of course, your deployments on-prem, cloud, and hybrid. So how it works in a hybrid environment? Listen, you can do on-prem only, you can use Azure only, or hybrid. Of course, Azure only and hybrid would support WVD. And when we integrated with Microsoft, we're using Windows Virtual Desktop, Microsoft Manage Azure Services, RD session hosts, gateways, connection brokers, Azure SQL DB, web access, and of course, the REST API. So the Parallels REST client, when you have your publishing agent, secure client gateway connecting to existing resources and talking to AD, will be similar to talk to the Windows Virtual Desktop client. Our clients are integrated. So if you have a resource that you're using Windows 10 multi-session or other components uh, in WVD, we will call the API, open the connection, and the user traffic will be distributed to one or more subscriptions, to one or more workspaces, or to one or more host pools. It depends on how your deployment will be working. So the idea here is a scalable way to have WVD workspaces and host pools working for desktop application groups, remote application groups, and so on, where you can use RD session hosts and as well, Windows 10 uh, multi-session VDI. When you deploy it for the first time, this is a new menu that was added into the REST console. In the start wizard, we had RD session host, publishing applications, and now invite users. And from now on, you can also do WVD deployments. And those allows you to do multiple things, can be um, Windows 10 Enterprise multi-session, extended support with Windows 7 security updates, and organization using RAS with Azure as a VDI provider, that's another way to do it as well. So it is, the gap is very simple to uh, move from existing uh, you know, uh, Azure VDI provider and also using WVD now. And in this case, you can do two things, maintain legacy applications, and as well, start using Windows Virtual Desktops for your deployments. With FS Logix, what I mentioned before, we introduce in the properties for the RD session hosts and VDIs, and as well, a new site defaults options for user profiles. So we replace UPD, with just called user profile field or tab, where you can use different ways to use FS Logix. So the first screen, what do you see? Configuration and management, profile management control in RAS. However, if you already have FS Logix in place, you can just ignore this option or later on migrate it into RAS. And the deployment is simpler because you're controlling already from the RAS control. And it's a good opportunity to move from UPD to FS Logix. So if you uh, are switching from one to another, it is a good opportunity to do that right now. However, we go one step beyond, which means you can go to the advanced settings where you can set uh, the same settings that would be applied into uh, GPOs on the server side or GPOs deployed throughout the domain where you can 
optimize log on and log off time, traffic load, how the profile is being handled, application compatibility, and of course, organizations using Office 365, they have access to FSLogix for free. So why would you use a different solution? So that's why it's integrated, but not one level. It is a detailed or granular level where you can set all of advanced uh, settings and policies to make sure you have FSLogix configured without having to use scripting or knowing much about how FSLogix works behind the scenes. This feature, we call it User Experience Evaluator and Advanced Session Details. We have been has for a very long time, and now it's here. So now we have uh, 25 new different session metrics details where we can show the details related to session performance, login, uh, resources being used, and so on. And the idea here is to not ask the users anymore to give you client information. All of this information, it's now rolled up into to RAS console. So user session, we look into uh, you know, a client initiating a session, RAS shells receive the query, we simulate user actions and awaits updates, shell sends a reply, and the client receives the reply and calculating the time. So we calculate the time between the interactions between all RAS components. So let's get into the details where we see the session setup, which is pretty much what we have today or we have in, up to uh, into version 17. What it's new, it's connection details, where we see connection mode, authentication type, MFA provider, and flow. And flow is actually very cool and very important because now we have the flow that shows if you're using a network load balancer, forwarding gateway, or just standard RAS secure client gateways. So we can see the hops from the end user until it reaches RAS and inside the RAS uh, architecture all the way to the VDI or the RD session host or even to the WVD session system. Now, on the logon details matrix, we can see now logon duration, duration breakdown, and the breakdown is also quite a bit interesting because we have connection time, authentication duration, host preparation, user profile load time, policies lookup, group policies processing, desktop loading, and so on. And we added as well for user profile where we have uh, the information about which profile is being used, FSLogix, UPDs, or third party. Within user experience, now we have time taken for a client action to be processed and displayed, connection quality, latency, protocol, and this is great for when we are implementations to make sure customers have TCP or UDP or even TCP and UDP over the RDP protocol, which is great information to make sure the best practices are in place. Bandwidth reconnections, less reconnects and disconnect reason. So this is a good troubleshooting information that is exposed to the RAS console for the help desk or support to find out why the user was being disconnected. And session details, there are a few new metrics related to incoming and outgoing data and of course, uh, bandwidth usage. And all of these options are now defined in the monitoring settings where you can have, for example, that uh, thresholds can be customized through the RAS console and the RAS web administration console. And you can set what is the orange or yellow or even red um, levels to get notifications and visual uh, cues uh, when issues starts to happen. And those are broken down per metric where you have the warning level and the critical levels. Of course, by default, we give some suggestions, but each environment can be unique, where therefore you can set up the metrics the best way you want to go. Another great feature is related to automated image optimizations. 
So what is this particular concept? Well, first and foremost, a lot of Windows standard deployments come with unnecessary or unneeded software. And a lot of enterprises or SMBs or service providers, they create their own customizations. That's great, you can keep them as is today, but if you don't know or you want to explore different optimizations, we have a list of 130 different optimizations in 11 different categories to do a few things, enhance the image optimization, size, performance, login, and so on, built into available out of the box, bring your own scripts if you have already uh, them in place for optimizations. And this can be applied for RD session host terminal servers, VDIs, and WVD, or Windows Virtual Desktops. And this also applies to standalone deployments, templates, and sites which means if you already have done those deployments and you want to go back and apply those optimizations, those can be now in, incorporated and brought to uh, your deployments. And what are the benefits? There are a few. More efficient use of resources, increased user density because CPU will be optimized, disk space will be optimized, memory will be optimized, so we have a greater and better user experience. And that reflects also in costs if you're using cloud-based deployments. And it makes, makes it simple. And of course, the boot time is quicker, cloning is quicker. And we also reduce time from POCs to production because the virtual machines already are optimized to go to production level. And that leads to another interesting new feature uh, that we have started in Hyper-V only now which is called the VDI, RDSH and VDI distribution to local storage. So if you have deployments that you don't want to use uh, NAS or a virtual NAS, you just want to use local storage, we will be adding other, other um, um, hypervisors along the way, but we, we're starting in Hyper-V, especially because uh, a lot of customers that used to have V workspace they tend to use Hyper-V, so this is a good transition for them. And as well, if you're not using the workspace, but you want to go through the path of using this technology, we control the distribution of those images, propagation and updates. It's all done through the RAS console. So how that works? First and foremost, you create uh, the template in your source host, and you can target multiple hosts like it was in the previous screen in the panel. So you can go to target one, target two, and target three, for example. And the template copies are distributed to all target hosts. Then the template copies may be distributed sequentially or simultaneously, depending on your network configuration and compatibility. And lastly, cloning process starts just after template is distributed. So it's pretty much a decentralized way to clone. However, you have a centralized management to control all of your deployments. And we created or started mentioning in version 17, a help desk portal, which we rebranded now to a management portal. The reason is a management portal is because now you have more management features like REST console onboarded or enabled into the management portal. And those actions will be several related to actions to session hosts, controllers, gateways, certificates, publishing resources, enabling, disabling printing, scanning, license management. And of course, you still have your support and troubleshooting. The UI was designed to work on regular HTML5 browsers as well on your phones. So you can have a secure um, uh, web interface to control your deployments. If anybody is interested to ask, can I upgrade using my web management portal? Not yet. This is not a use case that we cover today. It is meant to extend, use, and manage your uh, you know, Parallels RAS resources. So here are a few examples. One of them is how RD session hosts are visualized. So on the left side, 
we see the infrastructure, desktops, certificate gateways, and so on. And for our session hosts, you see pretty much what you have on your, in your system. You see the servers, you can search them, configuration, and uh, of course you can drill down and search all of those resources, which means we can also look into publishing. So all the published resources, or let me rephrase this, is not only view, but you can uh, edit and create them as well here in, the, in this particular console. So the target filtering shortcuts can be also um, configured. So if we go to one level down, we can go to the application settings, even target application folders and executables or starting parameters can be uh, configured and set up in, in this particular view. Filtering also applies where we can see here um, which filter is being in a summarized view, allowed users, um, inherit if it's the case, allowed gateways and client OSs uh, available as well. And in the case of publishing a new application, this panel is very similar to what would you see in RAS console for Windows where you can select the type, sites, from, type, and of course, installed apps, which will automatically map from the servers or the VDI, what application is going to be published, and then have that configured. That also wraps on how user profiles will be tied as well. So here we can see the same panel I showed a few slides ago, uh, related to FS logics, how they can be configured over here. And if we move to a web interface, here we have the management portable, we call it mobile user experience. Here you see pretty much the same view. We use just an iPhone here to get screenshots for you, showing how that would apply. As you can see, it uses an SSL certificate and uses a different port than what you, uh, that you have on uh, load balancers or existing traffic for your users. So if, if we're using today port 443 for your RAS deployments, this will be running on port 20443. Of course, those, those the port can be changed according to your security requirements. Another interesting um, performance related feature, and this one we started working with customers in our private technical preview. And during private technical preview, the accelerated file retrieval to the introduced only for Windows clients increased 90% the speed and efficiency in, in a few scenarios. Um, to enumerate folders, to upload and download folders. To do that, we introduce a kernel-based driver it's efficient. We cached content on workloads. So it's actually is faster for the users as they use more and more this particular feature. And this is a key differentiator from us from different products and as well from WVD. And if you're using or planning to use WVD in RAS, this is a plus because the WVD client doesn't have this option, but we do and we can provide uh, this option for RAS and WVD deployments working together. Now, from a CPU load balancer perspective, we are introducing as well a dedicated management page for our CPU uh, load balancer management. And actually, there are a few things here we, we, we have done. First and foremost, um, we start monitoring uh, different thresholds like 20%, 25% here in the example, critical and idle. However, we have now the ability to start managing processes on resources based on those metrics. And if they are consuming too much resources, we can set them uh, different priorities where user experience is not compromised, or if, for example, Microsoft Teams is using too much resources on that particular virtual machine, you can automatically throttle. However, we can actually uh, exclude certain processes from being controlled. However, 
the idea here is a few things. Better management controlling the CPU resources to avoid, like for example, Google Chrome killing the virtual machine because it's using 20 different processes, for example, or a different browser or a different application. Higher user density because you're using less CPU cycles. And the hardware can be optimized or be lower a configuration if, you, if you're controlling way better the CPU resources. And of course, better user experience because we're mitigating um, experience degradation for that matter. Now, we have talked about some stories in the past. So here, just recapping a couple of our uh, existing customers and references, why they chose to use Parallels Remote Application Server. So this one here is in Germany. And we have here as well um, one other one here in the US where you know uh, enabling access from anywhere any device including chromebooks it's a very critical um, you know way to do ras today and let's move on to the demo so the demo uh, i already pre-recorded this particular demo because it's a an hour and a half uh, demonstration on wvd and such so we condensed to, to highlight the bigger features and and how it works so these are the areas we're going to cover today. And so let's get started. So let's start the demo with uh, the WVD uh, part. And here we have a few resources already deployed in Azure. As you can see, a few virtual machines already deployed. So to do that, let's open RAS console where we have a few uh, things already done, but using the traditional way a gateway, we have an RD session host, and we have a couple of resources provisioned on this particular resource too, a desktop, and of course, a browser. Just, just to so showcase what we have already. So we open the client. Let's take a look at the properties. We're connecting to this particular environment with a WVD user. We will launch the desktop. So it's a shared desktop like we did before. And let's launch Internet Explorer. And this is what we have been doing, again, for a very, very long period of time where you can publish your legacy applications, i.e. is just to showcase this particular example, right? All right, it's working, so let's close it. Let's close the desktop as well. And let's go to the farm and enable a few things. Let's take a look into WVD settings. We will download the WVD client where you can be in the publishing agent or a network share. We will create a name, which will be WVD deployment. And we can search for credentials. RAS can have their own credentials on the Active Directory, but if we have specific ones on Azure AD, we can add them over here. So let's put the user ID and password. And if you have more than one credential, no problem. We will sequentially use all of them. Then we need to put Azure related information, which is related to the tenant ID, which is your tenant ID, the subscription ID, where all of these WD, uh, WVD deployments will be running. And we need an application ID and key ID. And those have been created on Azure before. Keep in mind, you have to have them created prior we deploy uh, our WVD implementation. Next, we'll verify and let's click on Finish. Then the wizard will create a workspace. We can use existing workspaces. See, we can query them uh, throughout the API to Azure. But let's create a new workspace. And in this case, it would be just RAS workspace. Then we will validate. And then we need to set the resource group. So you can create your own resource group or use existing one. And then we can click on Next and finish the workspace creation. Now we create or use an existing host pool of WVD. So we'll create a new one called WVD Desktops, for example. Click Next. 
And here there are a few options. It can be pulled, application, or desktop. We'll select desktop. We can either use a template or a standalone. Let's pick standalone. With the standalone option, we will query the resource group. And searching for prod, we can pick a virtual machine that is already or has been already deployed. And this is Active Directory and Azure AD integration, which group of users will be accessing this resource. So we use WVD users. We will not use optimization at this point for timing, but you could. Next, it's validated. Then we go to the farm. Now there's a new session called Windows Virtual Desktop, which hasn't been applied yet. Everything we did is over here. We can see the host pools as well and click apply. Now this is in deployment. So we're communicating through the API. This takes a few minutes to be completed, right? So we can see the configuration, the hosts. Now we initialize installing the agent. We can see the assignments, the Azure um, AD groups and users, profiles, optimizations, host pool settings, and printers like we had originally in RAS. When now installing the agent bootloader, which is part of Azure, and Windows Virtual Desktops. And once that it's completed, we can move to the next milestone in terms of configuration and settings. If you have any questions, this is the right time because this is processing what we have done and then we can address it. See, it's okay now. We can click okay to make sure those settings are done. We'll see the not verify status. We will refresh the status change to okay. And going back to Azure portal, now we can go to that resource group and resources or the virtual machine as well, and see that we created tags and those tags are from RAS API controls. The same thing on the resource group, we can find or search for WVD desktop. It was created as a host pool and application uh, pools and groups. We can manage it from and see that we have the same thing we did on RAS console propagated into uh, Azure portal. Let's search for WVD again, and we will see that WVD desktop also was created, tags there. We can see one session host that has been linked to this deployment, one application group settings defined. And if we go back to our RAS console, now we can publish that resource. So let's add, would be a desktop. Next, new option called WVD. The group is already mapped like we did before. We can create the resource name and such, finish. And also you can set the desktop like the size if you want. I will customize one so we can have multiple on the same screen, right? Click apply to save those settings to the agent. Let's refresh the client one more time. And now we have WVD desktop, double click. And what happens here is the new integration that we have it. We'll be logging in if it was the RAS client. And now we open the WVD client. Now we force this stop to stop, the step to stop for you to see how that works. So we can do standard mode, which use the WVD client and you interact with it. And the advanced mode, it's everything behind the scenes where our policies apply. And here is the desktop, right? So let's take a look into the session settings. So go to the main group, session hosts, we'll see that we have one active session. Go into the details, you'll see the same thing, right? So the same information, it would be also available on RAS console. We go to hosts, you see the host connected and session. And there is the user WVD user one connected. Like we do on other deployments, you can right click and show processes everything running 
and you can manage it as well. So it's not only viewing, but it's the same experience we have. We can also send a message. Hello, and then we'll see that also um, being interacted on the WVD desktop. All right, so let's close it. Let's go back to the REST console and let's try another feature. So we go to host pools and we can add another one. And in this case, we will do one for apps. So we'll be in WVD apps, for example. And the option will be application this time. We'll be using a standalone feature, not template at this time. We'll search for um, the same production environment we had it before. We'll pick a virtual machine. Next, we'll add a Azure AD user group or users. So let's put WVD users one more time. Done, next. And then we'll skip again the optimization. And once that it's done, we'll be able to publish apps. So deployment is in progress. Hosts, we'll see the system is broken in the beginning because we're refreshing, right? We're syncing up agents. That will take a couple of minutes in a production system to, to work and change the signaling to prepare host or preparing host. And once that it's done, of course, the status will be changing to, um, to OK, right? Any questions, please post them in the Q&A and we'll be addressing as we speak. And look, the agent bootloader is being installed. Now the agent, our agent being deployed. Now we're adding the host pool extension. And now it's okay, ready to go. Okay to save those settings. Refresh. We'll see from deployment in progress to change the status. Okay, that takes a couple minutes. We can at the same time look into Azure. So back to the group. Let's change now to WVD application. We have the user groups and the host pool created. Tags in place. Go to session hosts and application groups. So we have the desktop group that we created before. WVD users and the same thing for apps. So the remote app will be also available. And again, why we're showing this to you, it's to show how we interact and you can see from both sides, right? So let's go to publishing and publish another resource, application from WVD, installed application, like we do with RD session host and VDI, we scan the server or the Windows VDI. We see the applications, we have Microsoft Office in this case, let's pick one. We'll finish and apply those settings and then go to the REST client. Like we did before, we refresh the client. Word is there and let's launch it. Uh, just to remind you at this point, we are only doing Windows uh, clients and we will be adding other versions as well. Now the WVD client was invoked. Like I mentioned before, uh, we wanted to stop on this app for you to see how we're interacting via remote app but in production, it's, or a POC, it's a single uh, seamless user ID. And there we go. Word now it's launched in this particular deployment. Open a file, let's create it. And go back to the client, open now Internet Explorer. And now we can see a RAS deployment in WVD side by side. You can see the difference with the icons. One is a parallel shell and the other one is WVD shell.
So let's close them. And that's pretty much what we want to show with this um, WVD integration. Now, for accelerated fire retrieval demo, let's do a very quick comparison here. On the left side, you will see when we don't have drive redirection cache, and on the right side, you do. And the idea here is to show how fast this can be done compared to how it used to happen. So without redirection cache enabled, enumerating duration would be taking, in this case, almost six minutes. And on the right side, the whole process will be less than a minute. So opening folders, saving the files, and locating them, which used to be a, a big uh, request or complaint from our customer base saying, hey, this is taking too much time to load, especially trying to find folders and custom folders, it is a huge difference. So what we're doing on the right side it's far quicker than on the right. So I won't spend too much more time on this particular uh, feature, but it's more or less of the picture you can see here, how big is the difference? And that will be a great benefit for all of our customer base. The next demo is about UX evaluator. So first and foremost, let's open RAS client and open just a couple of applications. So I'm opening Paint, and as well, I will open WordPad, uh, just as an example, again, of applications to play around. So I have two of them open uh, in my session. And let's minimize for a moment and look into the RAS Admin Console. The changes that we have made, they're centered into the console itself. So let's maximize and see the new differences. If I scroll to the right, now we see more information related to logon duration, evaluator, the protocol I mentioned earlier, if it's TCP, UDP, session length, reconnections, uh, how much data has been going back and forth. This is like a bird's eye view, but if you want to have a detailed view first, you can just right click and you say full screen. Now we can have a, a true view of what's going on. I can right click again and go again now to session information. And here we see all of the metrics and you can of course export them. But what is very important here, this refreshes in real time or every few, every few seconds, we see latency, transport, how much bandwidth it has from my client to the server backend and what kind of connection has been done through gateways, if we use any connections, how many gateways in the middle, what resources have been used. From a login perspective, we can see connection, authentication, host preparation, if we're using group policies, and so on. And if a user does not know what client and server or Windows uh, client version they're using, you also will be able to see from the screen. Again, you don't have to use the full screen option. You can just right click, go to show information. You can see that. And as well, like before, we can go to tasks and um, change the columns as you need, as you wish to, to do that. When we go to monitoring settings, we can go to this option here. And now you can set what it's warning and critical. And you can pick and select the metrics that are going to have the color change throughout this particular administration screen. To use FS Logics in RAS version 18, we made it super simple, like I mentioned in the slide deck. First and foremost, we go to the, our site settings, features, and now we have the panel that controls where FS Logics installation will be. You can either use it manual install online, install from a network share, or push from a RAS publishing agent where you need to download the file and upload to the server. For online installation, we just click on online install and we pick the supported version. It can be uh, two versions that you see here or even a custom URL. So let's use version 2009 or 1909, depending on the servers you have. 
I will choose 1909 in this case. I'll apply the settings. And now we can go to our RD session hosts or VDI or WVD. And in this case, I'll pick my group. Double click the group that I have. Go to user profile. And instead of using the site defaults, I will just make it for this group where we use FS logics. We're going to use SMB location instead of cloud cache. Pick the folder, which is already in one of my uh, storage containers. Format, allocation, so this looks pretty good. And on additional settings, we can set different flags like users and groups, inclusion or exclusion, folders to be either added to the profile container or not, or advanced settings that you might want to customize. Usually these are uh, GPOs that you push to those servers, but in our case, you're doing the push directly from the REST console. So let's save it. We will click OK and we will apply those settings. And when we go back to our server, we can go to the server settings and go to the user profile and that will be already here. So the process will be enabling, it will have a server pending boot, a restart to, to be done, and then FSLogix will be ready to go. So let's keep going with our demos. In image optimization, as I mentioned before, is available for RD session hosts, VDIs, and Windows virtual desktops. To enable this feature, just go to the section you want to enable. In this case, I just enabled here on VDI. Right-click Site Defaults, and we can set optimization. First and foremost, you enable the optimization, and you can either use automatic option or manual option. Automatic will be searching for the best use case for your system, but if you have manual that you want to have specific uh, uh, options and features optimized, you can select uh, from this particular categories. Once enabled, the system will automatically ask you to schedule a server restart for those servers that are in use. Therefore, users would not be affected. So if we switch the view from VDI and we go to RD session host, right click, site defaults, and here under optimization, we will see the same options as well where we can enable optimization, choose to manual, and then we can see the options here to either reset to default or pick the options. In case you have GPOs that are overlapping, you can use always the option to force optimization. This is the new management portal in RAS version 18. You have to sign in with administrator user or a service desk person. When you sign in, what is different now is the ability to not only read and take very simple actions, you have granular options in the RAS console. And they're broken down here on the left by site, infrastructure, sessions, publishing, site settings, and the help and support, where you can find technical documentation and more information on how to reach out to parallel support team. In your site information, you have an overview of what's going on in terms of gateways, publishing agents, and of course, your VDI providers and ID session hosts. On infrastructure, we have the ability to see hosts, groups, virtual desktop, certificates, gateways, and also the providers. On each device or groups or the uh, settings that you have, you can select a specific server and see general information about active sessions, running processes, and so on. What is new, the category sessions has been separated from the, uh, from the view of only to oversee the overall infrastructure. We combine them based on search capabilities and as well filters or settings that you can apply or information that you can see for each individual session. And in publishing, it's where you can see existing publishing resources and as well change settings, if you will, or even publish or create new groups. So publish a new application, you can set application, for example, or even a desktop. Next, 
where it's going to be applied. Next. The server groups. Next. And the name, which is a mandatory. I will call it desktop. And I'll use the default settings at this point. Click on next and finish. This is just to showcase something new that we have and we didn't have before. Of course, there are other options, including site defaults, where you can check connections, FS logics, universal printing and scanning. What I want to highlight again in connection, you can check allow devices users and also modify your multi-factor authentication options. I know we are running out of time, but there are other features that I could not show today to you. Like for example, Hyper-V local storage um, image distribution. So I would encourage you to take a look in our public technical preview, which has been available for the last few days. This is the QR code where you can scan it, try it, contact us and give us some feedback. And uh, let's move to Q&A questions, which I'll be uh, directing you in the chat window and as well um, in this particular session time. Thank you very much for watching this webinar today. And if you have any additional questions, please reach out to us at parallels.com/ras.